So I just wrote and recorded a song with my good friend and artist Francis Carell. We laid down all of the lead and background vocals that we needed. And now I'm going to show you the three phases of vocal production that I use to make this demo really shine. I can't get over you, can't get over all that we used to do. I can't. Awesome. So I think that sounds great, but there's a couple things that came to mind when I listened back. So I'm just going to dive a little bit into my vocal chain. And I'm first going to start with a little bit of auto-tune. Obviously, Francis is a very talented vocalist, probably doesn't need a lot of auto-tune, but this is just going to help nudge up some of those moments that were a little flat and nudge down some of those moments that were a little bit sharp to provide that consistency across the track. Then we're going to move into Arvox, which I'm actually not even using as a compressor. I'm only using the gate feature to get out any unwanted room noise that might be bleeding into the recording. And I'm also going to use this RX mouth declick to kind of get out any of those mouth clicks and saliva e noises that are coming through Francis' vocal, either while he's singing or in between those vocal phrases. And I want to make sure I get this done before any compression comes into play, because the compression's only going to bring up all of those kind of unwanted noises that are introduced into the recording. Next, I'm going to enter the phase of my vocal chain that's really focused on getting a killer dry vocal sound. And I'm going to start that just with a little bit of EQ. So you'll see that I have this filter that I'm going to use to pull out some resonances in Francis's vocal because Francis's voice is going to have a certain tonality that's very specific to him. I can't lose all that we've been through And I know the truth is I'm holding on to you No, I can't, I can't So right around 1200 hertz, I'm finding that there's a little bit too much buildup. So all I'm going to do is just bring down the gain there, probably between 3 and 6 dB and just soften that curve a little more so that we're taking out that buildup. And then I'm gonna repeat that process for any other resonances that might be showing up in higher frequencies up in this range. Next, we're gonna move into the compression stage of the vocal chain. I love using the combo of the 1176 compressor going into the LA-2A compressor. This combo is really gonna provide you on the 1176 end, really slamming that transient and on the LA-2A and really bringing up and smoothening out that steady state signal. So you're going to get a really consistent signal across the entire vocal phrase based off of the attack times of both of these compressors. And it's just a really classic combo that's worked well on tons and tons of pop records. And in between those two compressors, I'm just going to have a multiband compressor that's clamping down on a little more of that boominess and muddiness that might be building up from the 1176 compression. After my compression, I'm going to move into the Pultec EQ, and you'll see that, again, I'm just attenuating a little bit around that 100 hertz range to lower any of the buildup that might have been caused from the LA-2A compression in that range. And as you'll see, you know, on three separate occasions, both in the EQ, the multiband compressor, and in the Pultec compressor, I've really made it a point to carve out a lot of the low-end space. And that's because we really want to leave room for that drive and that punch in the bass in a pop production, and also leave room for those background vocals to exist and provide some of that body behind the lead. Next with the Pultec, I'm going to boost a little bit around 8K to give it that presence, that bit of shine and shimmer. And you can do this with five, eight, or 10. It really just depends on the vocalist and how their tonality influences which frequency you wanna boost to give that shimmer. And then since we used a bit of a brighter mic, like the TLM 103, I'm just going to attenuate 10K slightly here on this setting so that we're making sure to get rid of any unwanted hiss that's coming through in this recording. And a good way to tune some of these frequency settings is to sort of pan between both extremes on the equalizer. So if I play this. I can't get over you, can't get over us. And then kind of peel it up to going a lot further than you actually would on your final setting. And then just gradually bringing it back down until you've hit a point that you're satisfied with. So let's try that. I can't get over you, can't get over all that we used to do. Between 2 and 3 dB of a boost there feels pretty good to me. So I'm going to leave that for now. Then the last two steps of getting this really solid dry signal is just going to be a little bit of parallel compression and then a de -esser. So now let's A-B that and see how it sounds before and after this processing so far. 
I can't get over you, can't get over all that we used to do. So that was the raw signal. Here's the process signal, just fully dry. I can't get over you, can't get over all that we used to do. Now we're gonna move into sort of the spatial part of the vocal chain. We're gonna start introducing some reverb and delay. So first we're gonna start with this just very slight slapback delay. And you'll see I've only set it at about 65 milliseconds and the mix is very low. So what this is gonna achieve is just a little bit more depth and sort of that 3D characteristic instead of making it sound like it's actually living within a room. I don't wanna pull this mix so high. I can't get over you, can't get over. That it feels kind of boxy and in a room. I wanna keep it low so that it's just getting a little bit of that depth. Next is gonna be a delay preset from Sound Toys that I just really love. You can find it in the vocal effects folder and it's called Rezo Slap and Echo. I think this just sounds amazing on vocals. I use it on pretty much every single vocal that I cut and process. I'm gonna make sure that I use my low cut and my high cut pretty substantially because I don't want this sticking out too, too much and getting in the way of the dry lead signal. But you can hear how this sounds if I just turn off some of these things that come after it. I can't get over you, can't get over all that we used to do. So you can see it just has kind of a really nice analog-y, bubbly kind of tail at the end of the vocal phrase. Next, we're just gonna move into a very small amount of reverb. I only have it at about 2.7% mix. And I've kind of preset all of these settings to a spot that I'm just really happy with. I just want it to live in a little bit of a space, make it feel a little more natural. And of course, I'm gonna low cut again, a lot of that muddiness that tends to trail on with a reverb like this. Then the very last thing I'm gonna do is just add a little more parallel compression. You'll notice that I did already add some parallel compression to the dry signal, but this compressor is gonna be used more so for the wet signal. I'm gonna keep it at a very low mix, and it's really just gonna bring up some of those tails and the reverb and delay in between those vocal phrases so that it's a more consistent level when Francis is singing and then when the reverb delay is kind of interacting with the track and then when he comes in and starts singing again. I can't get over you, can't get over all that we used to do. So based off of the vocalist and the delivery of the vocal, there are a number of different ways that you can customize this chain for that vocalist specifically. And like even here, I've gone in and automated the reverb and delay so that it feels dry and very tight in the verse because with this song, there's not a lot of elements going on in the verse. I kind of want to emulate that with the vocal itself so we can hear how that sounds. You're falling out of feelings. I'm missing the beginning. So I really don't want much of a tail going on after the vocal phrases within the verse, but in the chorus where I want things to kind of climax and feel a bit bigger, I'm going to bring up the reverb and delay so it feels like it's getting that infusion of energy. Can't get over you, can't get over all that we used to do. So now I'm gonna move into processing all the background vocals, and we're gonna start here with just the double tracks. So I'm gonna start on my double bus here, and the things that I'm really gonna look out for are any breaths in these tracks and any hard consonant sounds or plosives like ba or ka or pa, because we really only need one of these, right? Maybe for more of a stripped back live performance, you wanna make it seem like you have all these background singers and you can hear them taking breaths and enunciating things in different spots and make it feel more human. But for a pop production where I want everything to sound really clean and really tight, I'm gonna take all of these out of the background vocals and just nicely cut and fade things. So I'm gonna go in here, take out some of these intro breaths and just fade them nicely. And then I'm gonna go in between the phrases where Francis is taking breaths to go into the next phrase. And then I'm gonna go in between some of these phrases and take out those breaths as well. Yeah, so as you can hear, there's just different breaths kind of coming from different parts of the stereo field, especially since we're panning these background vocals to add width. And we don't want those popping out and distracting from the lead. So I'm just gonna kind of cut and fade here. And then I'm also gonna look out for any hard consonant sounds. Another thing I'll do too, and this is 
again, a slightly more minor example because Francis is such a talented vocalist and he's able to time these background vocals very tightly to the lead. But in some instances, the singer is going to sing a little bit past the end of the phrase in the lead vocal. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is just go in and cut off the ends of those phrases. So as you can see here, barely goes past, but I'm just gonna cut this off and make sure this is all even and faded so that it lines up with the lead vocal really precisely. And then processing wise, on each of these tracks, I'm just gonna make sure that I have a little bit of auto-tune going on. I'm gonna put on this leveling compressor to make sure that each of these tracks is at a fairly even level going into my bus processing. If I preset that compressor on each of these tracks so that I know the level at which all four of these tracks are gonna go into my bus processing, then I can kind of just leave these parameters that I've set alone and I'll know that they're gonna work, they're gonna sound great. So what I've done in my bus processing here for the doubles is essentially just done a carbon copy of my lead processing. All I'm doing is subbing out you know, these waves emulations for the 1176 and the 2A and then throwing in a sound toys EQ in place of the pull tech for CPU reasons. So basically I'm just gonna go through each of my subsequent background vocal buses and do the same thing that I just did with the doubles. And after I do that and make sure all of my processing is sitting well, I'm gonna make sure that everything is panned across the stereo field pretty well. You can see if I scroll down, I've done that and kind of changed it up in terms of where I'm putting certain tracks in the stereo field and just giving everything a nice spread so I'm achieving kind of that maximum thickness and wideness that we're looking for. So you'll see that I've just printed the dry lead vocal onto this dedicated track so that I can really cut and fade things to my liking and have these reverb and delay throws come in where I see fit. And I'm just going to look at doing these on the chorus on this song. So I'm gonna cut everything that comes before that. And we're just gonna take a listen to how this track sounds with my effect chain on it. But before we do that, let's just dive quickly into what I'm actually putting on this track. It's just gonna be a simple ping pong delay where I'm gonna utilize my low cut and my high cut. And that's gonna go into this bigger cathedral sounding reverb. And another thing to note is that you want these effects to be completely 100% wet because we wanna treat this like a return track, right? So first let's take a listen to the actual audio file that we're working with here, just that dry print of Francis's lead vocal. I can't get over you, can't get over all that we used to do. Now let's hear how it sounds with these effects when we turn on that chain. Awesome. So I'm thinking this could be really cool to utilize in that sort of transition between the first half of the chorus and the second half of the chorus, kind of right after he sings, I can't. So let's kind of pull everything up until that point. And here, if we just fade there, how that's gonna sound, soloed still. Awesome. So for now, I'm just going to cut the rest of that just to see how this effect sounds in that moment specifically, and then fade the end of it. Let's see how that sounds. All right, now let's hear how that sounds with the full track. Awesome, so I think that sounds great, but there's a couple things that came to mind when I listened back. One being, I think that fade could start a little bit earlier when Francis sings the word all. That's really a vowel that opens up, so I feel like that'll be more of a natural leading off point for one of these verb and delay throws to really expand the vocal there. The other thing I was thinking was maybe it just extended for a little bit too long. I don't think we need it on that next phrase of I can't. We have plenty of support behind that. So I'm just gonna make some small edits to go in and adjust the timing and fade these a little bit differently. Perfect. Now let's listen back to that and see how that's feeling. Perfect. Now that I can't at the end of the chorus to me is a lot clearer, but we've really opened up the part before it so that the transition feels like a lot bigger of a moment. 
and it's washing into that next section and keeping up the energy in this chorus. So that was just one reverb and delay throw. I'm gonna go through this entire audio file and pick out other moments that I think could use a little bit of elevation and a bit more intensity. And maybe that's not all just in the chorus, you know, the most climactic part of the song. Maybe it could be cool to throw in some moments in the verse or the pre and filter them a little bit more, or even kind of like we did before, resample to another track and maybe throw some, some more effects on it to make it sound like an even cooler ear candy kind of moment. So as you can see from this process of going from the lead vocal through the many, many layers of background vocals into some of these spatial effects tracks, it's really important to leave a lot of room in your production for these elements to exist. So I encourage you guys to try a few of these techniques out. Every artist, every song is gonna be different. You just gotta see what works for you.